Hey everybody, it's going? Welcome back to another MAMG Let's Play. Today we're going to be playing a game called The Shadows That Run Alongside Our Car. Now, I played a game not too long ago called Emily Is Away, and I wanted to play another game that apparently is, is kind of hard to put into a certain genre. And again, I don't know if this video is going to be very long. I know this is falling into the hour-long video slot. I'm sorry, it's just the best way for me to get new content out there and try some very different things. But like I said before, there is another longer series that's coming very, very soon. I just want to make sure that it's right after I either leave or when I come back or right afterwards. Yeah, so it's, it's really hard to explain without spoiling it, but it is going to be a very story-driven game. And I wanted to make sure that I got your guys' input and we had a back and forth, which is why I'm waiting to do it. So this one, I have no idea about. Whose eyes will you see the road through? Oh, okay. We'll choose this guy. Gun it. I put the pedal to the floor. The wheels screech as we pull out to the lane. The car swerves, but it doesn't really matter. There's no one else out here as far as the eye can see. The abandoned station shrinks behind us until it's gone. And then it's just us and the long road. The world outside the window passes by us in an abstract, like the whole world's given up on having any meaning. We drive in silence. After a while, I hear the faint buzzing of the power window being rolled down. You sure that's a good idea? It's not like zombies are just going to hurl themselves at a moving car. Fair enough. Well, that was a thrilling conversation. So I guess it's kind of strange to be asking after three whole days, but what's your name anyway? Right, we never did introduce ourselves. It's... Uh, Shelby sounds good to me. Shelby. Well, nice to officially meet you then, Shelby. Mine's Justin. Alright. Okay. Ah. Uh, the car shudders briefly as we rumble over a series of potholes, but then the road smooths again. The humming of the engine reminds me of a storm, brewing far off on the horizon. Beyond these occasional notes, we sit in silence. So, what were you doing before everything happened? Hmm? Oh. Wow. That's the first time she's actually started the conversation. Guess I'm not so intimidating after all. What was I doing? God, what was I? A whole lot of nothing. I bet that sounds super impressive, huh? Just a scruffy drifter. Not sure she wants to hear that. I... Dodge the question, bend the truth. I... I bend it, I guess? I was moving cross-country. Then everything went south. What about you? This ride is yours, right? Mm, yeah. Well, it's really my dad's car. Or was. Even when he was alive, though, I was the only one who ever got to drive it. Ah. Guess he didn't. Sorry. Never mind. It's okay. The booze would have killed him eventually, anyway. Pretty quiet in here, huh? Surprisingly, not much noise at the end of the world. Do you think there's any radio stations left? I'd be pretty shocked if so. Reckon it couldn't hurt the look, though. She's fiddling with the dial. I'm pretty sure we're not going to find anything. Static comes in and out in waves. Every so often, the distortion gives the illusion of an actual sound, but then it goes right back to nothingness. Just then, though. Hang on a sec. Go back down. I think I actually heard something. The noise phases in and out. Then as something comes into auditory focus... Yeah! I guess? Is that... Mariachi? <laughs> I can't contain myself. The sound is unmistakable. Horns blare joyously over the static in a sick fanfare, while a man's voice wails soulfully over it. I'm laughing so hard I nearly pissed myself. Shelby's nearly there too. That was not what I was expecting. Who the hell's out there running this? Of all the music that could be left. Man. 
I sink back into the driver's seat, letting my mind drift to the music. The dissonance is almost comforting. As the fractured chords wash over me, I try to pretend that I'm lounging in a truck bed somewhere. Out in the sun, mid-afternoon, shirt damp and dirty from a hard day's work. For a moment, I almost believe it. The music falls short for a few seconds before starting up again. Wait, isn't this the same song again? Uh, it's probably on an endless loop, because why wouldn't it be? Sure seems that way. Guess it's just ghosts on the waves after all. And the undead aren't exactly interested in DJing. What? You th well, what'd you think a zombie would even listen to? Is death metal too obvious of an answer? Rob Zombie! Or maybe they're all into baby metal these days. I don't know. I think the Grateful Dead seems more apt. You know, I've always wondered this, but what are they grateful for exactly? Maybe they finally found themselves some peace. Peace, huh? I wish they'd let the rest of us have some. Ain't so bad right now, anyway. Well, except for that. I shake my hand at the radio controls. So, what are you into, anyway? Music-wise? I really like Atlantis Morissette. Top 40 hits, and that sort of thing. You? And don't tell me it's baby metal. Would you judge me if I actually say I haven't heard of them? No, that might be for the best. What do you listen to, then? Most people look at me and expect me to be into the Stones or Marley or something, but... Well, you probably just judge me for... More for this, haha. <laughs> Try me. Abba. <laughs> just as I thought, she starts laughing at my expense. It's a nice sound, though. I'm not gonna be poetic and say that it sounds like music or anything like that. Still, it's good to hear. Told you. No, no, it's fine. Their music's catchy. I mean, my parents listen to ABBA, but it's fine. Your parents? Yeesh. How old are you anyway? You seem a bit young for Atlantis. How old do you think I am? Pretty sure there's no right answer to that question. Except for that one. I'm 22. Hmm. Crap. God, that's so young. She's practically a kid. What was I doing when I was 22? Still wasting my life, I reckon. Wonder if she's even been to school. That young and the whole world's crashing down around her. I try not to make a face, but I can see my knuckles going white as the fingers grip harder into the wheel. The music's kinda similar to ABBA, isn't it? All peppy and stuff? You should be happy to have it. That's sure an optimistic take on it. Alright, enough of you. I reach down and turn the volume knob a sharp left, and the radio goes blissfully silent. Farewell, wailing man. Now it's just us again. Did you ever, ever expect things to go up this way? It's getting dark, huh? The sun sets so late in the summer. Uh, sore topic, huh? I guess she doesn't want to think about it. I can't say I blame her. I'm a bit surprised we still have any light at all at this hour. Especially without the streetlights and all. It's like the sky has just been saving it up. Looks a bit like a dying fire. Kind of fitting for the end of the world. So, you never really told me what it is you want to do. I mean, it doesn't have to be a job or anything, but, well... Mm. What do you like to do, or did you? Well, what did you do before everything? Actually, I worked a lot. I didn't really have time for much other than that. I would wake up, shower, go to work, have a lunch break, back to work, get off work, eat dinner, and watch TV for a few minutes before passing out. And then the whole thing would start over again in the morning. That was about it. I guess that's most people's story. It's tough out there. It was tough. Probably tougher now. Heh. <laughs> All kind of pointless in the end, isn't it? You work your tail off and everything goes to pot anyway. And you just wonder why you didn't spend your time better, you know? Yeah. But I guess it doesn't matter either way. So what about you? I'm sure you didn't spend all your time listening to ABBA. Ah. I used to travel a lot. Looking for work and stuff. Suppose you call me a bit of a nomad. 
Well, that sure is lofty. That sounds really cliche. Not really. It sort of suits you. To tell the truth, I haven't had much purpose in a while. I've just been getting by. When you can't find something to do, you sort of lose yourself. It gets to a pretty dark place. Got to the point? I used to wish I would just take a vacation from life. Guess I got my wish, didn't I? Wishes never do come true the way you expect them to, huh? Tch, yeah, monkey's paw. I don't think she knows uh, I've noticed, but she's pressing her gut a lot. wonder if she's still alright. Since I first ran into her, she's been in a rough way, and I'm not sure it's gotten much better. We probably should look for some, uh, some more bags of that ginger stuff. Uh, nauseous. Okay, still feeling nauseous? Hmm? Oh, yeah, it's gotten a little better, but... I was just exhausted, which doesn't help things. You know how it is. I do, but... Christ, I'm not equipped for this. I'm not first aid, I can stitch up a gut, but... Gastric distress is a bit beyond me. You think we should stop and rest? Nah, like it or not, we'll be stopping soon anyway. Breaking would just waste gas. Right, the fuel. If everything wasn't so weird these days, I'd call it suspicious that there was only a single tank's worth left. Not much we could do about that, though. Onward it is, then. It's getting darker. Do you ever wonder? Like, why us? How did we make it this far? And is it really such a good thing that we're still alive? Ha! <laughs> Didn't I used to. Honestly, I try not to think so hard about stuff like that. If I stop to wonder what my own life was worth, I... It's a dangerous train of thought, I'll tell you that. We're here. That's what matters. Despite it all, we're here. And we're safe. The how and why of it's just garnish on the salad. You know, I didn't believe it at first. I mean, that we were really facing the apocalypse or whatever. So the first couple of months, I just kept working. Kept on like everything was fine. And then... Listen. You don't gotta answer me if you don't want to, but... Your old man. What happened? My dad? <sighs> so he needed more beer, right? Of course he did. He was a deadbeat alcoholic. But they wouldn't even let him in our nearby liquor store anymore, so he wandered off to another one. Just so happened that a part of town was infested. It took a while before I even noticed, since he wasn't really any different than usual. That's pretty pathetic, huh? But so was my dad. And in the end, I won't be doing much better. Great. Now I feel like I want to puke. Hey. Please, don't say things like that, Shelby. One of us has to keep this up. Um, let, let her be. Wow, yeah, I'm not going to creep out about it. She's already tense enough, but we're still here. Just remember that. Until that changes, there's still time. Things might never get any better. It'd be stupid to assume that they would. But while we're still breathing, there's hope. Ha, <laughs> it's pretty cheesy, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry about that. About your dad, I mean. Even if you didn't want to get on with him, I bet it must be hard. Losing someone that close to you. Yeah, I guess. It all happened so fast. I'm still trying to come to terms with it. I wouldn't worry too much. There's no wrong way to feel. I guess I'm almost privileged. No one I care about has been found in a uh, long while. I wonder if there's anyone still out there. I wonder if they're stuck out there. Like this. I wonder if we'll ever know. I... Just as she starts talking, the engine gives an unsettling sort of rumble and my heart jumps. It sputters a few times and the whole chassis lurches. With a pitiful clattering, the engine stalls out, and the car can't do anything but coast. Crap. I noticed a few light click on some minutes ago, but I guess we still wanted to... But I guess I still wanted to think we had more time. The car rolls down to pavement until it can't anymore, and we amble to a stop. I really thought the gas would last a little longer than that. Bound to happen sooner or later, wasn't it? God, if I wasn't hoping for later. We bought this car used, after all. 
It's cost efficient, but not so much fuel efficient. Wonder how far the next gas station is. It'd be nice if there were some signs around here or something. Can't believe we've gone this long without seeing any. I haven't seen anything for miles. Even without people, without lights, I can't see how this could be. Like civilization just packed up and let the moment everything started to crumble, leaving not a trace behind. Even if there were, it's not like we could see them. It's gotten so dark and without the street lights. Hey, how fast do you think you can run? I don't want to run anymore. About average, I guess. Do you reckon we should? Her hand touches down to her stomach again. I really don't think she's alright. I don't know. I don't know if there's a point. Not much a point to anything. Not anymore. Maybe not. It's too dark anyhow. In all likelihood, one of us would probably trip and fall. It'd be pretty sad to make it this far just to die from a bust-up face. <laughs> Please, just smile. Yeah, it would. Anyway, there's nothing we can do until the sun rises. I stare out the window. The sky is clouded, but if I squint, I can see faint lights in the velvet. The breeze through the open windows, quiet and clean. Guess we're crashing here tonight then, huh? In more ways than one. Could be worse anyway. At least the air smells nice. Yeah. I sink back into my seat. I search around for the lever on the side so I can adjust the angle, but even when I yank on it, the thing won't budge. Used car. Right. I try and get comfy the best I can. I only hope that she can too. It's gonna be a long night. Well, good night then. It's so dark now, it's not much different when I shut my eyes. I breathe in and out and wait for sleep. I hope we see the morning. Whoa, that's it? Okay. Huh. Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to start this again. And we're going to see it through her eyes. Gun it. <laughs> I lay back against the passenger seat. It's weird sitting on the side of the car. But my stomach's been feeling off for a while and I just can't drive. And so I've handed my keys over to this stranger. What's the worst that could happen, right? I stare out the window watching the unchanging scenery whiz by. There's an awkward silence, but I don't feel like feeling it. It's so stuffy in the car. I reach for the window control button and let the window roll open. Okay. Um, so we can skip anything. Okay, well who knows, maybe they would. Fair enough. The slight breeze feels good against my neck. But this guy looks like he wants to say something. Okay, so what's your name? We go ahead and skip that. Dustin. He looks dissatisfied. Blah, 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 blah. Let's try that again. He looks dissatisfied. How was he expecting me to react? It's not like I really care, but somehow he doesn't look very much like a Dustin. I continue staring out the window. The sky's so red. Normally I think it was pretty, but now it's just depressing to me. Bad things come out after dark. I remember that all too well. I'd rather not talk about that, so I decided to break the silence after all. What were you doing before everything happened? He looks surprised. I guess I haven't been talking much since we met. Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. Uh, what does he mean? Uh, whatever. Whatever, it's not like I actually care, I just wanted to pass the time. What about you? This ride is yours. It's actually my dad's. Okay, so we can skip this. Uh, after dad got the third DUI, his license was revoked. He used that as an excuse to never leave the house. It was just as well anyway. Sometimes he'd leave the car somewhere and forget where. I'm feeling surprisingly calm about this. It's like I'm on the outside looking in. I wonder if I'm really that uh, callous. Maybe the apocalypse is just giving me more perspective. Uh, yeah, take a hint already. <laughs> okay. Surprisingly, not much noise at the end of the world. Still. Do you think there's any radio stations left? I'd be pretty shocked if so. Reckon it wouldn't hurt. I reach towards the console and turn the radio dial in one direction. Okay, there's nothing but static. Something metallic screeching. Great. Hang on a sec, go back down. What do you hear? Sorry, it's hard for me to, like, skip and see. Uh, there couldn't be something there, could there? I slowly rotate the knob back the other way. Wait. There it is, I think. 
Alrighty. Oh. My. God. Oh my god! I cannot believe! Out of all the music that could be playing, this is what we get. What am I thinking? Of course it is. Of course we're on a highway to hell in the dark and the mariachi is the only music available to us. The combination of Spanish vocals and horns on the track are completely ridiculous right now. I'm actually dying. The dulcet tones of this fabulous man are actually killing me. It takes me a minute to settle down, but then... Uh, yeah, it's on the loop. Typical. Alrighty, we're gonna skip this. He gestures towards the console, 101.7. It is now the infinite loop mariachi radio station. So what are you into? And now I got a lot of free time to explore my musical taste or anything. No baby metal. He doesn't have to know that I unironically like baby metal. <laughs> Do you now? Oh my god, I can't keep a straight face. With the ABBA? Yeah, I lose it. Everything is just too much. He looks kind of sullen. I'm sorry, Dustin, but not that sorry. I managed to get these words out. All the slappings make my stomach hurt more. Uh, what kind of reaction is that? Her age is 22. No, whoa, you look so young, or anything like that. I wonder how old Dustin is anyway. He personally reaches over and shuts off the radio. Heh, he's got a surprisingly immature side to him, too. What? Well, where did that come from all of a sudden? Uh, pause. Why'd you have, why do you have to ruin the mood like that? It's getting dark, huh? It sounds kind of morbid, but... Okay. Sorry, I'm skipping this because we just saw it. It's silent again for a little while, but it doesn't last. Never told me what it is you do. Okay. Like to do, huh? I turn my eyes to the window as I think on my life. After leading such a boring life, I ended up here. I'm probably not even gonna go out with a bang. My death's gonna be just as dull as my life. It sucks. Uh, yeah, that's actually exactly how I feel about it, too. I'm surprised that I'm actually able to relate with him. Zombies don't care whether you're a good person or a bad person. We're all gonna die anyway. Okay. Let's skip a little bit. Did he backpack across Europe or something? No, he did not. What does Nomad mean in his context? Well, whatever. I used to wish for that, too. Sorry, I know skipping it kind of, like, detracts it, but I don't want to read everything again. I wanted to be free. I didn't want to be responsible for Dad anymore. And now I'm not. But I can't say whether that's actually a good thing or not. Which is never... Yeah, they never come true the way you want them to. My stomach so starts to throb painfully. I look down and press my hand against it. It felt okay for a while, but it's acting up again. God, why did all this have to happen? Uh, I shouldn't be so obvious about it. I don't want to cause any more trouble. This might be causing even more trouble, though. It's gotten a little better. Anyway, I move my hand from my stomach. It's not like resting my hand there will make the pain go away. In a way, as long as I feel that pain, I know I'm alive. That was morbid as hell. What's wrong with me? I'm just exhausted, which doesn't help things. You know how it is. Should we stop and rest? I glance at the fuel gauge on the dashboard, nervous. We barely have a quarter of a tank left as it is. Yep. Trying to ignore my pain, I keep my eyes on the endless road stretched out ahead of us. And that's when it... Oh, it really hurts now. I don't think I've ever been in this much pain in my life. And that's saying a lot, considering what I had to go through every month. I deserve this, don't I? I shouldn't feel bad about it. I brought it on myself. Do you ever wonder? Yep. From the moment I swung that baseball bat, I sealed my own faint. Just as I start to sink into really dark thoughts, I hear Dustin's voice. Uh. Um, that we're really facing the apocalypse. Okay. And then I couldn't ignore it anymore. And then Dad. How do I even begin to explain? 
Oh, I killed him. I smacked him in the head with a baseball bat and then ran like hell. Huh. So you need more beer, of course. Uh, Debbie alcoholic. Okay, so she... Wow. Does it count as murder if you kill a zombie? Does it count as murder if you never get arrested because your town's entire police force is now undead? And now so am I. In the end, I won't be much, uh, doing much better. My stomach's burning with pain now and guilt. I stare out the window seeing nothing but darkness. Who knows what could be lurking out there. Though that hasn't changed since the way before, I guess. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to see again. Oh, I feel the sudden warmth on top of my hand. Hesitant at first, but then steady. Dustin's hand rests on top of mine. It feels alien somehow, and I flinch. I don't think I'm used to comfort. I know he means well. Probably. We're still here, just remember that. Uh, until that changes, there's still time. There might be... Sorry. My microphone's like right in that corner. Uh, might not get any better. It'd be stupid to assume that they would. But we're still breathing and there's hope. It's pretty cheesy. Anyway, I'm sorry about your dad. Um, I'm gonna skip what I can. There we go. Wow, where do I even start? Uh, be honest. For some reason, I feel like I can be honest with Dustin. Even though I barely know him, I trust him. Somehow. My mouth opens all on its own and the words spill out. Honestly, I felt relieved when he died. And I felt awful for feeling relieved. But I spent seven years of my life taking care of him. At the end of it all, I just felt free. Not that I got to enjoy that feeling of freedom for long. It makes me feel like a monster to admit all this to someone else. It really does. But that's the truth. I wouldn't worry too much, there's no wrong way to feel. He's right. I know that I'm only human. I'm not a monster. Not yet, anyway. Guess I'm almost privileged. Uh, no one I care about? Yep. Dustin, I... I what? The guilt's really getting to me now. I have to say something. I... I'm interrupted by the sound of the engine giving out. I've heard the sound before. We're out of gas. Ah, uh, did the fuel gauge light even come on? I didn't even notice. The engine cuts out and the car just rolls along until it completely stops. Before, I would have pushed it to the nearest gas station, but now... Well, it's the end of the line, isn't it? I really thought the gas would last longer. Ugh. Too far. My stomach feels like it's on fire. I don't think I have much time left. Hey, how fast do you think you can run? I touch my stomach. That hole isn't going to heal over, is it? This is really it. I don't know. I don't know if there's a point. Even if Dustin was an Olympic sprinter, I don't think he'd be able to make it. Not forever. If not me, then someone else would just... Maybe not. It's too dark anyhow. In all likelihood, one of us would probably trip and fall. I'm pretty sad to make it this far just to die from a bust up face. He can crack jokes because he has no idea. Knowing that just makes me feel like crap. I can't say anything now. Yeah, it would. Anyway, there's nothing we can do until the sun rises. Guess we're cry crashing here. More ways than one. I close my eyes, feeling the throbbing of my wound. I don't know how long it'll take. How long will I be able to go on? I wish I'd done more than work. I wish I'd paid more attention to the news. For now, all I can do is rest. I've run far enough. Good night, then. The sunlight's completely extinguished. There's nothing but darkness on the endless stretch of land ahead. Okay, so I think it's going to end here, regardless of what happens. Because there are a couple other options that exist, but I don't think it's going to change too much. That was really interesting, though. Because, like, each perspective, each narrative gave you a little bit of that picture of what's going on. I think she was bit. And I think that uh, Dustin's going to be attacked when she turns in the car overnight. I think so anyways. But let me know what you guys think. And uh, give it a try too. The link is down in the description. If you think that getting, getting some other answers will get you a different ending, maybe give it a shot. But yeah, either way, that was the shadows that run alongside our car. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed. I'll see you guys on the next MAMJ. Let's play. I mean, I guess that's normal. As long as you're okay. There we go. Look at me being nice and sweet. I shouldn't compliment myself. That sounds really cocky. I am. We just get loud when we argue is all. Um. Okay. This is going to...
gonna be weird. None of these sound good. I wouldn't treat you like that. I just really care about you. You sounds like an a-hole. I mean, we're not pouring our heart out here. She's like, I am happy.